Are you a coder who gets rejected based on no practical experience or because others have a strong LinkedIn personal brand and you don't? Your coaching institute will hate me for doing this. But I welcome you to Code to Career 30 Days Challenge where I have chosen these 5 total strangers out of my LinkedIn contacts and have taken up the challenge to help them go from jobless or underpaid to well paid job that too without additional degrees and certifications in the next 30 days. If you are a coder and wants to get a well paid job, this is your golden chance to experience real project implementation from scratch that gets you a well paid job and builds your LinkedIn personal brand and also resume for absolutely free. So why just watch? Get into our WhatsApp community to experience this. Link is in the description. Now let's get started. Great. So let us start with this first. Like we will follow the format Q&A, then the main session and any other Q&A based on the session that we did, we do. Any queries or any questions that testering you, not able to take you forward, any blocks with respect to the previous content, especially structured programming, how to start from requirements, writing an essay. Anyone has any question? Hello. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, my question was not like regarding structured programming, but uh, so there are two types of implementations, right? Like one you said one for autos and embedded Linux. Can you like uh, elaborate on those two, like individual little autos and embedded Linux implementation? Okay. When it comes to the application, which is the TFTP proper, it has nothing to do with any underlying operating system. Now, when I say operating system, take it in this way. Some entity which is going to provide you resources, computation, computation, which is CPU and registers, memory, and then any other uh, hardware resources. What does Artos do? The same thing. What does Linux do? The same thing. I am only talking about the intersection point between your application and the underlying autos or sorry, underlying entity which gives these resources. I am not here talking about either autos or Linux. What I am saying is an entity which is going to provide you the resources because of which your application can be executed. So it has nothing to do with the underlying entity. So your application can be independent of those things. So where is the intersection point? the RTOS or the underlying OS, whichever it is, provides well-defined APIs to access those resources. In C, typically it is the C library. When you are using C, you are actually using the C library. So what is effectively happen happening is, do not worry about underlying OS, whether it is an RTOS or whether it is an Linux or Windows, if they say that I support C libraries and I support C calls, then you are done. You make use of your application or you make use of those calls in your application. The underlying things are taken care for you. Making sense? Having said that, still there will be certain specific areas. For example, the way you want to access a hardware device when the underlying uh, OS is present, underlying entity is a OS versus whether it is an RTOS might differ. Still, I still stand on the point that if you know the proper API which will take care of that, you don't have to worry. But you need to ensure that the application, there, there should be one layer of software between your application and maybe the underlying OS which will do the translation. So there is something called, uh, I can send you one link. Now, typically for people who are uh, 
who are uh, into AVR and those kind of uh, AVR type of control families from Atmel, right? They actually know that there is something called as OSAL, Operating System Abstraction Layer. So what it does is, it will take your call, depending on the kind of OS for which you are configuring. So there is a configuration file and you say that I want to use and these operating systems are well defined. When, when I say well defined, these macros are well defined. So you set that flag into in the OSAL and you compile that OSAL layer along with your application. So now what happens is the OSAL layer understands that if my user is asking or sending an API or using an API called write, the equivalent API of let us say some environment would be uh, like uh, send. So write has to be translated into send. OSAL layer will take the additional load of taking the parameters from your write and giving it to send. In between, if it, it has to do any other thing in terms of converting into a pointer or any other thing, OSA layer will take care. So this is what I am saying that you become independent when you think that you are abstracted and you are working on type of abstraction which is already present that is facilitating you to reuse the resources. Having said that, in this, let us stick to our initial thing of writing an application first for Linux and then go ahead with the Arctos porting. For people, that's why I said, for people who are good with, or they are aware of uh, this one, STM, ST microcontroller boards and all those things, they already have a port particular, specifically for pre autos or any other particular popular autos. So there they can modify their application to see that it is working. Otherwise, work it, let it be as a plain Linux application and you can do on desktop all this stuff. The third variation is make this application, let us say on Raspberry Pi. You want to run it on Raspberry Pi. So you need to ensure that for this particular application to execute an ARM controller, what are changes needed? Typically, nothing except that you need to now compile your TFTP application with cross compiler. That's it. So from your application side, nothing changes. It's only what and how you compile. Yeah. Any other question? Anyone? Yeah. Hi, sir. Yes. So actually, uh, I have a small doubt on uh, this TFTP, those initialization. Mm. So actually here we are using UDP, right? I mean the UDP protocol, which is, I mean, uh, TFTP is getting integrated with UDP, right? The TFTP complete packet will become the payload of UDP packet. Yes. Yeah, sir. So uh, how, I mean, uh, this, I mean, uh, RRQ and WRQ will be there, like uh, initialization, like uh, client will send those kinds of requests. So um, I have the doubt on this, how it will be handled from, I mean, propagated, like uh, from client to server. Okay. So we need to start from the application. You are somebody who is using a TFTP application to transport a firmware file from your place to some device which is remotely located. Yes. So you do not have a you do not have a particular um or should I say you do not have any idea that there is an underlying protocol called TFT which is doing you understand that I'm I want to use it, but from your application, you just say that this is my file and send. Okay. I'm talking about the highest level of application, which is a graphical user kind of thing. So okay. I say send. Now the middleware layer will understand that the middle layer will understand that, okay, this is a file which has to be sent to a certain location. Then <clears throat> assume, let us also assume that it selects TFTP protocol. Now the TFTP protocol has a particular frame format. So the next session, not the next session, the next to next session, you will be reading the RFC. Okay. There you will see that this is the protocol packet, like TFTP has a packet. In that, there will be a field called as what is the opcode, whether it okay. is a write operation, read operation, is it a data error or acknowledgement? Yes. So those are all well-defined. 
Now that goes that goes at the end. When I say end, the receiver end. The application also done, does not need to know what is the underlying protocol that is being used, whether it is UDP or TFTP, nothing. It, it will be receiving the file where the TFTP protocol will do the clubbing of all the information like byte by byte it will put or 152 bytes or whatever the size it puts and it, it collects all the things. Even TFTP is immune to the fact that UDP is the transport protocol. UDP puts the, I mean, UDP does the heavy lifting of actually transporting. Even to put, even to say that UDP is unaware that the underlying is IP. Even IP is unaware that the under... If you want to work with me personally, where I guarantee to work with you until you secure a well-paid job, book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Link is in the description. The underlying is Ethernet. When I say unaware, it just goes and sits comfortably into the Ethernet packet. Okay. Like IP comes and sits into the Ethernet packet and then all the, the top level layers do not need to worry how the low level layers are actually functioning. That's the beauty of this layered architecture. Okay, I mean, uh, like in each layer, there will be, fr framing will be happen automatically, right? Okay. Yeah, framing will be happening, yes. Okay. Framing will be happening from the sending side and deframing at uh, the clients. Happens at the receiver end. Yeah, sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Vamsi, the, uh, you told that the the op code, right? Like for each thing. So, uh, so we'll be having an uh, uh, unique ID for each uh, thing actually or like uh, we have anything in terms of like uh because like we do many uh many tasks right so for each task we'll be having unique id task. that is what you're meaning okay yeah. you can you can do any number of tasks but when you say the when you say make a statement like any number of tasks i i want to ask you like what kind of task um uh, uh so uh like acknowledging and then uh, error mm -hmm. so when it's getting an error so uh it would be identified by an uh, unique code if it's acknowledged they, it would be identified, be identified by, by they have to be identified as unique codes so programmatically if i if i jump across all the other abstractions and directly jump to the code you will say hash defined rrr rrq is one has defined wrq two or you can go enum opcodes and you put all these things in inside the enum. So essentially each operation will be uniquely identified among every other operation with a unique identifier. Yes, you need to do that. So like, see what you're saying is like in enum, if we mention like for error, we uh, it should hmm. be this code which should be uh, displayed. So it will display that code. That's what you're saying, right? See, it, it is an this is an error packet. Now, as part of error packet, what you want to display, you can send as a payload. As an error packet, okay. you can say this is the string to be because the receiver knows what has gone wrong or the server is aware what is wrong with the maybe a physical channel or something. Finally, conveying it to the user in a user-friendly way. Okay. Yeah. But Not each operation is unique. Oh, each unique. Yeah. Mm. Is unique. Okay. Let me share my screen. We have we have seen concepts like test driven development and yesterday and in the previous class we also saw the use uh, the what is this the structured programming and then uh, once we are at the level of pseudo code and we are just one step away from writing the code we can we can diverge uh, and take the route of test driven development then write the test case and then come back to the code and do it. 
So effectively, what I am, what I tried to do was there are two different concepts, which is a structured programming concept, and there is a TDD. So I tried to put both together and make ensure that the process that we are following is resulting in a code which is less having less errors, more controllable, and all the other things. And once we start with the requirements, how to trickle down till the place where we are ready to write the code. Now, this is another way, not, I would not say another way, but even before, or I should say, this is a process that I can put by the side of your brainstorming of the requirements. Now, when you are trying to brainstorm the requirements and you want to communicate with other people in groups, or you want to get more clarity, you can start drawing diagrams saying that this input starts from here, then there is an arrow, it goes here, then there is the output coming and it, we all are aware of these kind of things like where we draw something, then it goes all the arrows, boxes and all those things. So there is this structured programming or structured language called unified modeling language. So I would like to understand how many of you are aware of something called as unified modeling language or popularly called as UML. How many of you heard about it? Little bit of experience. Did you hear any time about it? Aware of UML. Okay. Bonesh says me. Ash says aware of UML. I have heard about it but never got to use it. Okay. Anirudh says yes. What about others? Never used it. Yes, used. A concept from UML is being used here. I, I will not get so much into UML because this is not a UML session and we are not trying to really create something because of which, I mean, when I when we process all the UML stuff and finally it is more like you end up writing a code in any object oriented programming language or something. So we are we don't want to spend a lot of time there, but I want to bring this perspective. Do you do you know that there is a there is a use of one machine, for example, there is washing machine in some parts of the country, especially like Punjab or other places, in big restaurants. Do you know that washing machine actually gets used to make lassi? How many of you heard about it? That in big, big restaurants and those places, they actually use washing machine to prepare lassi. The point I'm trying to say is, there is this pro problem. The problem is that the restaurant has to make uh, this beverage. And there is a solution which is washing machine. But washing machine is predominantly a, a, a solution for somebody who has a problem of washing the clothes. But somebody thought that, why can't I use the chain, same churning operation to prepare huge amount of lassi? There is a problem, there is a solution. But there are different use cases. Somebody is using the proper use case, but somebody is using a, or Somebody is using the solution in a way as per their requirement. So anywhere you see that a person is interacting with a system, that particular interaction can be put into a very convenient terminology called use case. So it's a case of how the solution is getting used. Am I clear here or are you, are you people clear here? Is it making sense? Because once I get into a little bit of extra terminology and I start talking about it, it should not confuse you. Now, in this particular, as per the UML, when you have particular equipment or a solution with which the user interacts, UML says that the user is called actor because that person, he or she is acting by performing an action. They are interacting with the system. Now the system will have a boundary. For example, let us go to 
simple example which is predominantly discussed in these areas which is the your drawing of money or withdrawing of money or depositing of money using atm whenever i go and try to interact with the atm i have a well defined interface that is there is a pin there is a cancel button there is an accept button or whatever and there is also there are also interfaces which will uh, enable me to take the money out of the machine or deposit the envelope into the machine so the interface to the uh, atm is well defined because the interfaces are well defined and the operations are also well defined wherever whichever country i go whichever bank atm i go i actually do the same operation or is it that i get i get into sbi bank atm and then i have i see that there is no money and by the side i see some axis bank or sdfc and i go there and i completely get confused because the look and feel or the way to interact with the machine is entirely different can this ever happen yes or no can this ever happen that you get onto in front of a different atm machine and you are in you are in you are in for a surprise as to how to use it does it ever happen the reason is because the well defined operation or the usage of solution is known to you so this is sweetly called as use case so there is a system there is a system boundary there are actors and actors use well defined interfaces to interact with the solution or the system making sense in our tftp based on this explanation based on this explanation where there is an actor through a well defined interface the actor will interact with the system in our project where we are implementing the tftp protocol which is designated or which is destined to take our information packetize it and send it to another location what do you think are the common use cases that can be figured out from our tftp or to put it in other ways what are the ways that you think that this particular tftp protocol can be used anyone what are the different ways in which this solution called tftp can be used i am not talking about the project i am not talking about the project idea i am not talking about firmware update or this that no but i am trying to understand what are the different ways in which this particular protocol will be interacted anyone can you think bhuvanesh chandrika सोल्यूशन to solve a problem so i am asking what do you think are the different transactions that i can do with the tftp so that my solution or my problem get solved so uh, you are asking like uh, so i am see in my in my in like in one of my use cases so how it was used is like uh, um Uh, so i am i am a client and then i see robot as an server actually so i would be in, um, i'll be transferring my uh, data through ros through um, for a robot and then to get to get the data from the robot and then i just uh, first first what i do is like i just ask robot the the exact position of what it is i'm i'm just requesting as a, as a, as a client i am requesting a robot so mm. it so uh, let us assume it's in server kind of stuff so it gives me the information it okay. gives me the values okay. and then next thing what you, what i do is like i just transfer the files so mm. i write the code and then i'll just transfer the file into the uh, robot and then to make it move actually 
so file transfer is will be going like um like subscribing from the from the robot and then i'm just publishing on it on the like on the robot so i can so i can imagine in this way in this way actually yeah okay you have said you have set one direction so i would like to take this direction that you have set and add few more questions on top of this so that you understand really what actually a use case or how can i think of you have said if you want to work with me personally where i guarantee to work with you until you secure a well paid job book a one on one call with me link is in the description you said that okay i am trying to interact with the robot by asking that um, move in this direction ya yeah, pitch rotation yeah. saying something right x y z and all those yeah, 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 yeah. this is one operation what are the constituent parts or the individual segments of this particular operation mm. and now oh. this is first question the second question is assume that you are ros you are robot everything is a cloud you don't you just send something into it you know that correct response will come back so i am ask i am saying assume everything is known to you it's a black box you only have that particular tftp protocol and you have your application you have application and you have your tftp protocol behind that there is this all cloud and black box where everything will happen and you know that it is working so i want you to break the operation into individual pieces of transactions and tell what is the transaction that you are going to have between you and you are tftp so bonesh socket is a mechanism through which you are doing it but what is the basic element or basic basic unit of operation these basic unit of operations can be in this context can be called as our use cases for example writing a file reading a file think of tftp as a tool you are getting the point agar hum jugad karenge we know that we have our bike key and a bike key is designed so that i put i put the key in the key slot turn it and the bike will switch on right there are people and we also i did many times we all would have done we use our bike key to open the lid of a tin can yes or no you took the bike key and open the lid of a tin can so this is one use case the different ways in which the solution can be used is this clear now जितने मुझे समझ में आई है आई थिंक आप यूजर एक्सपीरियंस की बात कर रहे हैं कि यूजर ने एक्चुअली करना अलाउड क्या क्या करना है हमने यूजर को और क्या चीज हो सकती है जो जिसके लिए हमने ये चीज नहीं बनाई लेकिन वो उसके लिए भी यूज हो रहा है हो सकता है हो सकता है यस हो सकता है बट सी दैट इट्स 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 अ रॉन्ग थिंग व्हाट इफ द टिन लिड इज सो स्ट्रांग दैट योर की ब्रेक्स यू 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 नो इट इज यूजलेस राइट यू हैव अ बाइक बट यू कांट यूज सो व्हाट आई एम ट्राइंग टू से इज the ways in which the user interacts with the system all falls under the legal ways the valid way, ways fall under this big basket of use cases now why is it so important the magic you will understand the next in the next session but these are well defined actions usme humko kya kya karna hai kya nahi karna hai these all are well defined i cannot go to an atm machine and put my atm card my card in the reverse direction and expect that the card the mission will work right yeah ye expect na karenge password nahi dala aur paise nikal aaye andar se yeah so these are all well defined hmm. now what is happening is the moment you see that is why i told this explanation or this idea of use case is something parallel to your developing of an essay it is just that now your english words you can actually put into your diagram also your two paragraphs or three paragraphs 
let it be there. You have a clear understanding as to what to do. But what if you convert into a diagram that independent of your English words, if you give this document to someone, they understand what you are trying to do, what the system is all about. Is it similar to is it similar to a use case of XB configuration implement for Zigbee protocol in IoT? This is a bouncer for me. I know Zigbee, I know IoT project, but may, maybe if you are saying that with Zigbee, this is one of the ways to interact with Zigbee. Yes, this is this is almost similar to what you are saying. Ajay. Yeah, yeah. So okay. what I can relate because it's everything is new to me. So TFTP and all. So yeah, perfectly all right. See, the whole intention is that people are coming from various backgrounds at with different various experience level and all those things. That's a that's a precise reason because of which the worksheets are given to you, the documents are given to you beforehand so that you can go through them. A little bit of Googling or open your best friend, the chat GPT and ask what it is. You will get some answers. The point is to be an efficient problem solver. There are well-defined ways and you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Follow a little bit of process and apply your thought process which you draw from your experiences, you are well in position to solve any complex problem. So let me start sharing the screen again so that now the use case will become more clear to you what I mean by it and how it is. Okay, the simple introduction because we, we, have, we want to start with a well-defined well -defined problem because there is a problem and there is a solution, but there are different ways of using the solution. Here are the actors. Now the person or the thing or the software module, anything, for example, TCP, if, if you take TFTP as an actor, but if you, if you say that TFTP is an actor, then there is a well-defined interface with which TFTP will interact with UDP. UDP, if it is an actor, it has a well-defined interface to interact with IP. If there is an application, the application has a well-defined interface. If the application were to be thought as an actor doing some action, a well-defined interface to deal or to access some hardware resource. Here, let us think of these actors. System administrator is an actor because he or she is willing or intending to put a file to be transferred across and that getting programmed into the end device. Embedded device is the receiver which is receiving the firmware and it is installing. The location of all the files from which the system administrator can pull is the firmware repository. Now the different use cases considering these actors and the system. The first one is the one of the use cases using TFTP that the administrator can do is schedule the firmware update. The second use case can be devices download the firmware via TFTP. This is the breaking down of the problem. In other ways, these are the different use cases of the solution where TFTP is involved. Verify firmware integrity, install firmware, report status, handle update errors. So let me stop share here and I will show you one simple diagram that I have created. Mm, or the simplest thing is yeah. Uh, Vamsi, in this project, we'll be doing any firmware updates. No firmware updates, right? Because we don't have any devices. We don't. We are not going to. We're going to do any firmware updates. Not needed, but if yeah. you have certain device, 
and you want to, I would not say truly a firmware update, if you can send from your laptop to one of the end devices like Arduino or something, one file that itself is good enough. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let me share the screen now. Oh, fortunately, it's the same example. See, this is the ATM service, the admin. So there are there can be different actors. When the ATM service has to be enabled, the admin will begin and stop the administrative operation. But the user, okay, this is some little bit of, uh, okay, let us take this example only. Let us understand the way in which the bank interacts with the ATM service. There is a menu or, excuse me for a moment, this is, it seems to be not a good diagram. As I mentioned, actors, use cases, and system boundary. Actors are something which interact with the system, and the way that the actor interacts can be called use case, and the system will not cross the boundary, and the boundary within which the system is bound to operate is the system boundary. Now, let us take the simplest diagram that these people have done. Yes. Forget about association and all those things. If there is a customer who wants to interact with a bank portal, one of the use cases of using the bank portal is to transfer funds. What is the system here is not defined in this diagram, but it is the banking system through which the customer can transfer the funds. This action of transferring the funds where the customer is the actor where transfer funds is the use case is a classical example of how a particular solution can be implemented and how the actor can interact with that particular transaction. Is this making sense? Sir, device checking for update, will that be a use case? Device checking for update. Okay, let me simplify it more clearly. Imagine you have a phone. I am the user of the phone or I am the actor. If I have to interact with the phone, if it is a touch screen, touch screen, I should be either entering the pin or my some biometric input. The point I'm trying to say is, if the use case is called login and I am the actor and the phone is the system, the use case is login, there is a well-defined interface that either I enter the pin or I use my biometric. I am the actor. My phone is the system. Whatever I do, I, I do within the screen, which is a system boundary. Login is the use case. The well-defined interface is either I enter the input pin or I use my biometric. Clear? Now, if it is, if it is TFTP, the various ways in which I use TFTP is either to write a file or read a file, get the error messages, send something, receive something. All these are various use cases. Now clear? The reason why I'm stressing the use case is your complete English, English statements or all the other conversations that you are telling to yourself that if this is the project, what should I do? How should it happen? And all those things. If you put it into a diagram and you say that, let me first start tackling with this use case. And where is this use case coming from? This use case actually comes from requirement. So I provide now in front of you people, there is a requirement document. 
you are brainstorming, you are brainstorming and you are thinking like what should be done, how it has to be done and you are narrating yourself. When you want to make your narration more clear for you as well as for someone to convert into a diagram, use cases are the starting point. The reason is simple because when you are taking one use case, your boundary is well defined, your interfaces are well defined, the transaction that you are doing with the system is also well defined. And under this particular use case, you also know who is the actor. Is it me the user or is it that some other software module that has to interact with TFTP? There is no scope of any ambiguity here. You are dissecting the problem. You are giving it a particular shape. You are defining the boundary. You are saying that I am doing only transferring of funds. Because if I get onto a bank portal, I can change my PIN. I can change my password. I can request for a credit card. I can do n number of operations. But I am doing now only one operation, transferring of funds. What is this helping me? When I say I am doing only transfer of funds, there are only specific steps that I need to follow. Any other software module that is not needed here, I don't have to even think about it. If I implement only the pieces of code which are needed that will take me from what I want and finally what, I, what the system should do, that use case is done, my 20-30% of code pertaining to that particular use case is also done. Function 1 calls function 2, function 2 calls function 3, function 4, function 3 calls function 4, which is the final thing, which is actually transferring the funds. If there is function 100, which is change password, in this use case, in this particular transaction, is that function needed or not needed? Not at all needed? Why should I worry? When I get into that use case, let me implement that. So your essay now takes a well-defined shape and structure. You break that essay into small pieces now for every paragraph. If you want to work with me personally, where I guarantee to work with you until you secure a well-paid job, book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Link is in the description. For a collection of statements that you come bring together, you have a well-defined and neatly drawn diagram also. Now, collection of all this text plus diagrams is nothing but your high-level design document. There is no so mystery about high-level design document. It is just that one layer below the requirement that if I create this document and I give it to someone and they read it, they know what the particular problem is. They will understand what to be done, what are the requirements and how somebody has to deal with the system because the use cases are well defined. In the next session, we will understand from this level of high level design document, what to do so that you get into the low level design document. Because time and again, I heard people saying that what is HLD? What is LLD? What actually happens there? These are all those documents and that information about a project which enables somebody to write a code irrespective of programming language. If I know what to do and I am a Python developer, I will not even think twice that whether I have to use C or C++. As, as, as long as I have all the facilities available in my language to solve the problem. Clear? So let us go back and yeah. So the negative use case, firmware download failures, connection issues. Firmware integrity, corrupted files. Understand that the center piece here is still the TFTP. 
the center piece here is still the TFTP, but I am giving a broader use cases where, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's not strictly the US, UML specific so-called use cases, because that's not our intention that itself is a study on, on its own. But I gave the enough ground to understand that these are the ways in which a particular solution can be used. Because when there is a download failure or connection issues, somebody has to carry that information and show to me. When there are corrupted files, somewhere that error cases has to be known to me. And this is the collection of all the negative use cases. System administrator, initial updates, initiate updates, monitor the status. The underlying entity, again, still the TFTP, where it is carrying the files, it is giving the acknowledgement. Embedded devices, it is getting the updates from the TFTP. If it has something to respond, it again reports the status through TFTP. Here, you have to understand that the underlying TFTP is implicitly present. Whatever interactions you are doing, at a high level seems to be that you are doing a high level transaction, but the low level TFTP stuff is always and every time present. Now, these are the various update scenarios. IoT devices, smart home, consumer electronics, automotive systems, and medical devices. And remember about the automotive system because we are going to get at the last I think three sessions before our conclusion or something, we will get into something, some architecture which is very widely prevalent in adoptive autos are, which is called service oriented architecture. Now, when I'm talking about services, service is a word which is a high level abstraction of multiple use cases. If I bring together multiple use cases, I can think it as a service. For example, let us say, I want services of a plumber. Am I not saying it is a service of a plumber? But once the plumber comes to my home, there will be various, various individual use cases, repairing the tap, repairing this thing, installation of something. These are all unique use cases. But when I want to collectively call certain number of use cases, I can call it as a service. Yes, these are all architectural terms, but most the most difficult part of any technology is to first get a hang of the terminology. You enter into any technical domain, the biggest hurdle, or if you enter into your company also, first, first few months or I don't know, two, one month or two months, to understand the acronyms like what they are talking and all those things will take time to be in the system. So importance of TFTP in firmware updates, robust error handling, practical learning experience for real world challenges. These are always the summary sites always remains the same. Yes, now let us brainstorm a little bit. If you understand what I try to tell. The assignment, because we started off with the project, the assignment would be if you were to develop a use case diagram hand-drawn or you use some UML tools for your project, what would be those two or three use cases? Now here when I say the use case diagram, the actor, the system boundary and other things should be well defined. So I'm see like, uh... Uh, we will take this one as an uh, assignment and we can show in next class like we we all will come with an unique human diagrams and show you so you can say which one is best. That is, that is the thing I am least expecting because that will not happen. So we will brainstorm now. We have, okay. we have 13 more minutes. We will brainstorm now and we will get to one, one use case so that people understand when they are thinking about the requirements and the stories are running in their mind, how they can translate their words into one diagram. 
and make the next step more easy. Why okay, I'm I'm so, uh, yeah, why yeah. I'm stressing on this I, is you will mm -hmm. get a file. See, when you get a file or when you get source code, there are various ways people will try to understand what is the logic in that code. Somebody will put a lot of print statements. They will give, they will simulate the input. They will see how the code is running because the print statement continuously starts printing. And they will say, that, oh, okay, this function is getting called. Okay, this is uh, this is the error case. This is where I am returning. All these kind of debugging, most of us would have done. What I am saying is not anything new. The simple printf, walking printf. For embedded people, one of the most classical way to debug is walking LED. Okay, you enter into a function, LED blinks, maybe red LED. Maybe the function two gets called. If I have enough GPI was maybe brown, some red LED or green LED or something. Or some LED blinking twice, thrice, all those walking LEDs is a very, very common debugging mechanism. But what if, if that code has to be written by you? You get into a project and they want you to enhance the code because the some feature enhancement or something from scratch. Or even otherwise, when you want to reverse engineer. Remember last session I told if you are start, if you start using this structured programming, you can actually reverse engineer a code. The hard and fast way is you put the print statements and see it. But if you want to get a overall idea of the thousand lines of code or something, this is the well-defined reverse engineer process. To understand like, if I take the whole code as a system and if I have to interact with that, or let us say module A has to interact with module B and I say that module B is a black box to me, what are the transactions that module A can do with module B? Now this will turn out to be a use case. And once you document which are all the functions that result in particular output to be coming, what is the path, you will see that in the code, there, is, there are various paths of execution. And this over a period of time will translate into your expertise in the code that you are going to deal with. Remember I told one book called Cold Simplicity because the biggest thing that we are going to encounter each one of us who desire to be a software engineer is to control this complexity. We can't run away from it. You want to take small piece of code and play small. You don't need any of these thought processes and all proven techniques. You can go and do a raw method of looking at the files, reading it, reading it, reading it and making something out of it. Or you adopt this kind of well-proven stuff which helps either to reverse engineer or to create something from scratch. Even for this also, I will say KTJ apply very well. It, it's only that in this in the software you, you need to do it once to really feel that these things work. Now one of the use cases where if an application which has the file the application has or let us say in the, the firmware repository the firmware repository is a small database which has all the firmware files version 1, version 2, version 3. For some reason somebody triggered a still yet to be tested version 3 updation but the system the, the system is not booting there is a power link the communication is intact but somewhere the system is not booting properly a request came that can you roll back to the previous version which is version 2 very very common case roll backing rolling back of versions if it is not working now imagine this person 
which is the repository of firmwares is the actor because that module is trying to interact with the TFTP. So what would be the basic corporations it would do? This will now translate directly into the op codes of the TFTP. So my intention of bringing all these use case and all those things is to cement the fact that the single unit operations that you do using TFTP are write request, read request, acknowledgement, error, and data. Can you now see how the basic operations actually fall into a convenient set of those tiny interactions which solve a complex problem. But before I can understand the complex problems, I need to understand the small, small links in the chain which actually make the chain what it is. How many of you got what I am trying to say? This is heavy in theory, I understand. But this is the foundation. This has to circulate in your mind for few times and it will make clear. The point I am trying to say is instead of remembering that oh TFTP means write request, read request, then acknowledgement, data, error. Some protocol will have 20 operations. Can you remember? Some will have 50 operations. But if you know that this is the use case, intuitively you know that okay these operations has to be there. Mujhe ye cheez karna hi padega. That is when this particular result will come. So your now tension is completely gone. When an issue comes, you know that okay, what is the what is the context? What is the transaction happening? What are the small units of operation that this particular protocol or something does? Can you see eventually when you are telling to yourself? your grip over the problem is actually becoming more stronger and stronger. Instead of remembering that, oh, oh kya hai, ye kya hai, then doing a lot of debugging, 80% of the problem solution is already, like a detective, 80% is already solved in, the, in your mind. Then you go to the code, trace that path, put the appropriate prints at the strategic locations, and you will root cause in the least possible amount of time. Just think, just lean back and think the complex softwares that you are, we take for granted, where we treat the systems left and right, but still the system behaves appropriately. How much people would have thought through? Just think about your dual authentication. You, maybe your Google dual authentication or something. Complex softwares are talking with one another. And these are all well-defined operations traveling through well-defined interfaces. If you want to work with me personally, where I guarantee to work with you until you secure a well-paid job, book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Link is in the description. Now what happens here, the actor is your repository of all the firmware which is now supposed to retrace back and put version 2 overriding version 3. One transaction has already come back saying that, okay, I am not booting, something is wrong. Now this is the actor, it will say that first operation, write request. So it will tend to the client that, okay, I am doing a write request. Then it will send the client will send acknowledgement. Then it starts telling sending okay this is the byte this is the byte this is the payload this is the payload this is the payload. For every payload it is sending acknowledgement acknowledgement acknowledgement. Then it is send done then acknowledgement. Now if I have to draw the diagram. Let me share the screen after this paint has come.
Is my screen visible now? The paint? Yes, sir. So this is the actor. In this case, this is the standard UML diagram for actor. So this is the repository of all the firmwares. And this is the boundary. Now boundary of what? Receiver. Now this is the use case. Firmware update. Yeah, firmware update. So I do one transaction. File and then response acknowledgement. I'm not talking into, I'm not getting into the details, but looking at this picture, if I say that this is the use case of firmware upgrade in a single shot, am I not able to make a sense out of it? And here I will say that image repository, IR. Making sense now? The beauty of use case will shine once you get to the next okay, stage called as sequence diagram. Matlab, aapka jo bada jo essay hai, jo English essay hai, at a high level is becoming use case diagram. The refined details of your essay will become sequence diagram. How? We will look in the next session. Any questions? Okay, somebody mentioned. So basically you are trying to say if we know different protocols, not necessarily remembering their functions and situation arrives, you can think of a right protocol and much beyond than that, yes. Much beyond that. When you start thinking in terms of how different modules are interacting with each other, and this is where the system knowledge starts evolving. Yes, our day to day, our day to day work would be dealing with one module, few functions, few bug fixes. I understand. But over a period of time, what do you call the expertise? An expert in particular software domain or in your project is some someone who knows that. When, when somebody says that this product, this is the error, they know that, okay, this module might be not working, this function here might, might be, because that person has a global perspective. When I am talking about well-defined interfaces, an actor dealing with one system and all those things, what is it I'm trying to do? Somebody who is now in a firmware update project, when something is going wrong, a transaction is not going through, then he will say that, did you check the firmware repository? Something might be wrong there. But how did he say that? Because he has that use case in his mind or her mind. Now what I am saying is, Aapko thokar kake, thokar kake, thokar kake, thakur barna hai ya pehle hi thakur barna hai? Kitna thokar ka hoge? And this is the highway, right? You have that understanding of, okay, this is the use case. Maximum how many point, how many people are interacting? Oh, these two people are three people. How are they interacting? Oh, these are the functions. Why are you doing this project? If I have to come to the real essence, this project, when if I do, and I get this advanced knowledge or understanding or something, and it goes to my resume, Mira career ka advancement hoga. I can showcase my knowledge somewhere and all those things. Fair enough. That's a knowledge. That's a intention only, right? So, uh, Wamsi, like, uh, I'll say one thing actually. Like, I thought of by saying you, uh, when you when you came to this context, I said right, like, I was talking to one of the uh, manager, like, he was from AMD. I told him like I'm working in UDP and uh, TFTP. I'm just because seeing my post, he was asking. I was saying him like I'm working in UDP and TFTP. He's he said like this one is a generic project. 
which will be applicable for almost everything. So it's good to do this project. Uh, like the thing is like, um, uh, he said like, uh, going more into specific. So this one will be very good for networking kind of thing. So from there you can start integrating it. So uh, why I said this, like, because you came to this context, uh, I said them like I'm doing project and this kind of thing. So he, he said this answer. Yeah. That is true. See, there are not so many variations of problem. I mean, sorry, there are variations of problem, but the fundamentals of the problem on which these problems are based actually are very few in number. At any place, there is an input, there is some processing and there is an output. The very fundamental embedded system block diagram, if you say, there is an input, there is a CPU, then there is an output. We, ca we can't get out of that particular fundamental thing. That is how it is. The variation is, yeah, the devil is always in the details and there are many variations of the theme. The same communication mechanism using TFTP, if I say somebody as firmware update, somebody can talk of any different product or any different use case or a problem, sorry, not use case, different problem. So get the fundamentals clear, then you, you will, many things get sorted automatically. I hope this session has been useful. This is a bit heavy in theory. Go and read the use case uh, stuff, which is there on uh, internet. Then come back to the document. Things will make now more sense. Yeah, if there, are, you know, if there are no questions, we can conclude. But if there are any questions, I would say, please don't keep the questions to yourself. They will come and bite you. The small, small doubts will come and bite you. The, the last thing I want you to is mug up the code or look at the code. Just type it and feel happy. That's the last thing I don't, I want you to do. I actually don't want you to do that. I want you to really understand that why the, why is that TFTP has these op cores only? Why not more? Why is that my project is designed like this only? If he asks chat GPT, chat GPT will give answer for everything. It's line by line code in layman words. If I'm asking, it's giving why we are using uh, for each parameter it gives. Yeah. Okay. Kazi, aapne jo banaya wo use case diagram nahi hai, wo sequence diagram hai. Sequence diagram hai likha hai, Huh? I wrote sequence diagram. Yeah, this is a sequence diagram, yeah. And uh, was it done by your favorite friend, ChatGPT? No. Okay. Okay, I created a sequence diagram a few months ago for two BLE connection with embedded device, just for idea. Yes. So we will get into the sequence diagram in the next thing. So I, I will I will take up two use cases, which is write request and read request only, and we will have a sequence, sequence diagram. There in that sequence diagram, I will actually put the function calls which are there in the code, so that when you get into the code, you really know that, okay, this is the path it has to follow. Yeah. Great. Uh, somebody is asking recording. Please share recordings. Yes, I believe the last recording was shared, right? In the group? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Yeah, I will share the recordings. Okay. Okay, then, then see you again. Uh, today is what? Uh, Wednesday. See you again on Friday. Yeah. Any questions, please be active on the group, active in the group, share knowledge. Take the help of community, grow more. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.